Being a tiling window manager, Awesome WM is designed to let you use it completely without a mouse. But the problem is that with the default configuration, there are some things you'd expect to be there from other window managers that are just completely missing, and other things that are kind of weirdly configured that you wouldn't really expect. So what we're going to be doing today is going over some of the little changes I've made to my configuration that make Awesome WM way better to actually use. So the first thing is moving windows between positions. So by default, it's going to be done by ID. So what I mean by this is let's say that we have all of these windows right here and it's in a master stack. So this is going to have the ID one or zero. I think it's, I think it's one in this case, then two, then three, then four, then five. All that really matters here is the IDs are sequential. It doesn't really matter what the start is. Anyway, to get this window that's in ID 5 into the spot that's in ID 1, you'd first have to move it into 4, then 3, then 2, then 1, which introduces a bunch of unnecessary movement that really doesn't need to be there. Now, there are ways you can get around that when working with a master node, but let's say that we have multiple master nodes, for example, and that we have this grid layout. So, to get this window that's in ID 4 into ID 2, you'd first have to move it into 3 and then into 2, whereas other window managers let you move by direction. And it's very easy to go and switch over to that, and that's what I'm actually using in my case. So instead of doing stuff by ID, so by default, this is what's actually controlling your movement. We can go and get rid of this and then swap it over to using the bi-direction function instead. Now, you'll probably notice that I'm also using the global bi-direction function rather than just the regular one. Now, what global bi-direction is going to let you do is basically the exact same thing, but it doesn't distinguish between your different screens. So I can then go and move this window over to my second screen, and now you see OBS. But this also just works more consistently with the other layouts as well. So let's say that on the spiral layout, doing this by ID is really weird and it's difficult to work out where things are actually going to be moved unless you've worked with the spiral a lot. Whereas if you have it on by direction and I want to move this window right here into the big window here, all I need to do is move it to the left and then it's magically there. By doing this, I find myself far less frequently using the command to move a window into the master position. It is still useful to have, but being able to just move into the direction makes more sense, especially coming from things like BSPWM and i3. Moving to a different screen does still have its purpose though because what we've been doing has been a node swap. Whereas if you do the move to a different screen command, that just moves it over rather than swapping something into its old position. Now I'm typically going to be using the master stack layout, but I'd recommend keeping the binding to go and switch between the layouts just in case you ever need to do so. Even if it happens like once every couple of months, that one time you need to do so, it's going to be useful to have. When it comes to resizing floating windows and tiling windows, if you do so with your mouse, so by holding down your mod key and your right mouse button, it does seem like they're handled in a very similar way, when in fact, if you look at them behind the scenes, they're handled very, very differently. And if you want to do so with your keyboard, you do need to keep this in mind. So in the case of a tiled window, we're going to have two different functions. We're going to have the ink MW function, and we're going to have the ink W function. So the ink MW function is going to increase the size of the master node. So that's going to be this one on the left-hand side here. And then the ink W function is going to increase the size of one of these nodes in here. Now, in the case of increasing the master window size, you don't necessarily have to be focused on the master window. It's just going to run it globally on the current desktop you're on. But as for increasing the other window size, you do have to currently be focused on it. But for a floating window, we're going to be using relative move instead. So this will let you resize it in any direction you want. And as you can probably tell by the name relative move, it is also going to be used if you want to go and move the window as well. And as you might be able to tell on the left hand side here, I'm using the same set of keys for both the tiled window resizing and the floating window resizing, basically by just checking if the window is currently floating. If it is floating, do a relative move. If it's not floating, use one of the ink fact functions instead. Now, as with moving the windows, by default, focus is also done by ID as well, which has the exact same problems, so we're not going to go over those again. And once again, I'm also using the global variant of by direction, so I can go and focus on my second screen as well, which is very useful when I'm doing things in games, and I want to just move my cursor over to a different screen without breaking what's being seen on stream. There was still a bit of a problem though, and that was with floating windows. So let's say that we have this one floating right here, and have it sitting behind this window here. Now, by default, if you then go and focus on the floating window, what's going to happen is you have focus on it, but it's still going to be on the layer behind everything, and you won't actually be able to use it. 
So all we need to do is go and lower the window that we're currently on. So all we need to do is go and lower the window we're currently on and that will make the focus behave like it should. Now I haven't messed with the section of code that controls the numbered function. So doing things like say viewing a different tag or toggling a different tag. But if you want to go and mess with that, this is the section of code that's actually controlling that. So it's quite well labeled. This is for viewing the tag. This is for toggling the tag. This is for moving a window between the tags. And then this is for toggling a tag on a focus client. Now, along with being able to focus on a window on a separate screen, I'd also recommend keeping around this function right here. So the focus relative function, because what this is going to do is let you just force your cursor onto a separate screen, regardless of whether there's any windows to actually focus on, which in many cases can actually be really useful, especially if you're using an application where it's very difficult to get your cursor outside of that window. Now, I do really like the master stack layout. The problem with it, though, is that even when you have three windows in your stack here, it's already getting to the point where it's kind of difficult to actually find a use case for them. So I could do things like, say, stick a terminal file manager in it, and that's basically usable. I could have a terminal here, and maybe I could have, like, NCM PCPP, but I couldn't have any, like, proper graphical applications in here. They would just be way too small. So what I would recommend doing is keeping around the binding to go and increase the number of master nodes you have so you can go and do things like say create this grid layout here and this is probably my favorite way to actually work with the master stack. But another thing you can do is add in a binding to increase the number of columns inside of the stack. So the way you're going to do that is with the ink and col function and what this is going to let you do is basically create this like three pane layout sort of thing. So we can have say like I don't know some code over here. If you make the font small enough, you actually probably could make it work with any code base that has a very strict 80 character line limit. And then over here, these are still very usable windows. So even though you're working with a master stack, it doesn't mean that you always have to have the master and the stack working in the default way. I thought I would miss the way that BSPWM handles stuff, but if you just think outside of the box a little bit, you can get basically any reasonable layout working without even having to go and install a custom layout. Now, one of the things I thought I'd never use when I first started using Awesome was the ability to go and merge the tags together, but I've realized since then how useful it actually is because what I'll usually do is over on some of the desktops, I never go and touch. So anything past like six, I generally don't have that many windows open. So what I'll do is I'll have something like say Discord open here, and then maybe I'll have something like Thunderbird. And then just when I wanna go and check them, instead of having to go and then open the window on my current desktop, all I'll do is just say, hey, I'm going to temporarily check this and now I'm done with it so I can go back to where it was now. Now, a couple more points about the floating windows besides the fact that we can go and move them with the relative move function if that's what we want to do is if you want to go and get rid of the horrible, horrible window snapping that happens by default, what you can go and do is add in this line right here. So awful.mouse.snap.edge underscore enabled. Set this to false and it will completely disable that. I have no idea why window snapping is built in by default, but I don't like it. It works horribly. It makes my life worse than it needs to be. So I got rid of it. Now, if you want to get rid of the floating window control with your mouse, or you want to go and change how it works a little bit, this is the section that goes and does it. I believe this comment is in there by default, but if it's not, just go and search for anything that's in here and you'll go and find it. So what you can do with the mouse is you can go and move windows by holding down the mod key and holding down your left mouse button. Or as we saw before, we can go and hold down the mod key and the right mouse button and that will go and resize it. But let's say you wanted to have it on like mouse two or something. So that would be the mouse wheel. Then you can go and do that instead. Now, obviously, this is by no means everything you can do with Awesome, but this is just some of the little things that I've come across during my couple of weeks of using it that make it much, much easier to actually work with. Before I go, I just want to say something quick. If you are enjoying the content, do remember to go subscribe to the channel because recently I found out that uh, over 60% of my viewers aren't actually subscribed. So I don't know what magical stuff it does behind the scenes on YouTube, but it does seem to help the channel out. So if you are liking what I am making, just hit the subscribe button and you'll maybe get updates. Probably won't, but it will help the channel out a bit. So before I go, I would like to go and thank my supporters. So a special thank you to 
Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pity, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, on the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast. Tech over T available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.